For three decades, his distinctive vocals, whether in full voice or his effortless falsetto, has soared over the top of one of the greatest R&B, soul, and pop groups in music, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Philip Bailey is here with a new CD, a solo CD titled Soul on Jazz on Heads Up International that breathes life into classic jazz songs by trumpet and flugelhorn player Freddie Hubbard, pianist Chick Corea, and Les McCann and Eddie Harris. Philip's love for jazz began while he was looking through the record collection of a friend of his mom's that was made up of recordings from Miles Davis and John Coltrane, along with the albums on Motown Records, and in particular, Stevie Wonder. 1971, while he was in the band Friends and Love in his hometown of Denver, the band was fortunate to get the call to open a gig for Maurice White's Earth, Wind and Fire. Bailey left Colorado for LA to become the musical director of the Stouffville Sisters Gospel Group, which led to his joining Earth, Wind and Fire, the ensemble that went on to sell over 20 million albums and win six Grammy Awards. 1983, Philip Bailey released his first solo disc, Continuation, and then subsequently, issued another nine, including the latest, Soul on Jazz, winning a Grammy in 87 in the category of Best Gospel Performance by a Male Artist for the CD Triumph. He had a huge album, Chinese Wall in 84, produced by Phil Collins, with great jams, the title tune and Easy Lover, the latter winning the Best Performance in 1985 at the MTV Awards. A man whose musical diversity and approach knows no barriers or boundaries, his music has touched our lives with rhythm and spirituality, crossing all cultures and generations. Life, love, and music. And here to talk about his latest creation, Soul on Jazz, as well as his extraordinary past and what lies ahead in the future, is Philip Bailey. And welcome. It's nice to have you here. Thank, Thank you for being you. here. It's very, very good to be here. What did the CD do for you? Uh, what excited you about it? And where does it fit in in the continuum of all of your solo discs? Well, um, this particular CD was one that was birthed out of uh, a love for this art form uh, and the composers, musician that uh, we paid tribute to by, uh, on the CD, um, many of whom, or all of whom I've been listening to for forever. And um, the uh, trick was to find the kind of songs that I had some special affection for, uh, to find three producers that could uh, help us put the type of treatment on the songs that would give it a, uh, a special flavor, uh, one that would have a personal feel. Make it know, distinctive. Make it very distinctive, right. So um, we actually did this record in a very short length of time. We cut the record in two days, uh, the tracks. We did the overdubs in the rest part of the week. <laughs> we, the next week we did uh, backgrounds and leads. We had two studios going on at the same time. And the next week we took off and then we mixed. So it was, within a month, the project was finished. It, it had its own momentum. I think that we kind of all felt that the project had a very special quality and that it was a lot of hard work in a short amount of time, but uh, it did have its own momentum. It kind of, uh, the whole was kind of bigger than its parts. Tell me about the career lessons that you learned while making this disc, what you needed to get out of it. Well, for me, it, I, I look for opportunities to stretch myself um, with the things that I did with Phil Collins, uh, um, the gospel stuff. It's, all, it, it's, it's always been about expressing all the many aspects of who I am as a person, um, as well as getting the opportunity to just to grow and uh, reach new heights, to mm -hmm. challenge myself in different areas. And bring all the components together no doubt. from the past right. to this particular project. Exactly. And in, in doing so, I've, I always have something to take back to Earth, Wind & Fire. Earth, Wind & Fire has been a, a, a great family, musical family, um, but it's, it's a team, and I have a part to play, very distinctive parts, so, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't offer me the full range of, of what I can do musically. So f since the 80s, it's, uh, uh, I've had to do other things to just kind of balance things out for me. Philip Collins, I want you to tell me about that get together. Oh, that was that was great. Um, I the the Phoenix Horns who pl who played who were then part of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, on our downtime, got a chance to meet Phil and 
later became part of his touring group and recording group uh, when we were down. And uh, so I met Phil at a uh, concert in, in Los Angeles at the Forum and just was totally knocked off my feet, you know, by, you know, the, the music, everything. I w didn't, I wasn't really that familiar with Phil. And, uh, and I was in the process of doing the second solo record. And I was like, man, I would love to do one of his songs. So I talked to him about perhaps doing uh, one of the tunes or, you know, writing a song for me or whatever. And one thing led to another, and they, you know, talked about the possibility. Well, hey, why don't you produce the record? Um, and that's how that happened. When I went over to London, um, and uh, me, Nathan East, and we had also a great time. Bass with Phil. Yep. And that's yeah, but that's how he met Phil through me. Oh, is that right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> so a little give and take. Right. Going In fact, on there. a lot of the guys that that. Uh, play with Phil, I met them through me. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a wonderful experience. And I was really, I was pretty much uh, taken back by just the fact that uh, after I was uh, made aware of just how big Phil and Genesis was and everything, at just what a sweet guy he is. You know, just very, very talented, unconsuming, unassuming, and just a great person. You know, I know everybody gravitates to Easy Lover, but I think Chinese Wall is You know there. what? Oh, man. Glad you say that because <laughs> to me, I thought that was the song of the record. And, great. Uh, you know, we, it, it was really big in Japan. We, we, we were doing it in the soul, in my solo show. We do it when we go over there. But, uh, Terrific song. Great song. Yeah. Roxanne Seaman wrote it. Triumph. Yes. The Gospel CD. Winning the Grammy Award for that disc gave you what? Um, a little more serious look in terms of uh, what I was, you know, what I was contributing from a gospel standpoint. Um, the first record was um, The Wonders of His Love, and uh, that was one of people's favorite records. Um, and still to this day, uh, a lot of people ask me about those songs and want to get lead sheets for a lot of them and stuff. So it was a great, great well, opportunity. You, you poured, you pour so much emotion into that disc. But you know, Philip, it goes back to the Stouffville sisters for you. Right. I mean, that laid the bedrock. That was the foundation to build to come to the Triumph disc. Right. Um, you're right. Man, it's interesting that you would pick up on that. Um, and working with the Stovall sisters, which was at that time just really avant-garde for a gospel family to be doing, you know, music that was gospel in nature but very pop-oriented or, or R&B-oriented, gave me uh, more of a vision of, hey, you can do uh, gospel records, uh, um, sing about things of religious nature, and they not be just uh, the traditional chord structures, the traditional ways of doing it. And uh, so, yeah, that was... Because it really does bring it to the pinnacle, the zenith, if you will, the culmination, getting that Grammy. So when you got up and accepted it, the feeling inside? Um, I really... At that point, to be really honest about it, I was very uh, uh, appreciative and everything. But man, at that age, I was so in the moment of until I didn't get a chance to really sit and go, "Whoa, you know, what is this?" I was doing so many things, um, and it was right around the time where we had had the hit with Phil and everything, and I was touring with Amy Grant and. On, with the gospel stuff and Easy Lover was a hit. And so there was a lot going on. <laughs> and there's Philip yeah, Bailey juggling, juggling it all life. and loving life. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, moving pretty fast. What does all this mean to you, Philip, this life in music that you've created in totality? I think in totality it's just a fulfillment of what I was created to be. 
Um, I've been singing since I was a kid. My mother said I was singing before I was talking. And I didn't really know what she meant, but my youngest son, who's at Berkeley now, uh, Philip Jr., he actually was singing before he was actually talking, too. Berkeley up in Boston? Yeah. Um, I think it's just, it's really uh, about me just fulfilling my destiny as, as a person. I want to talk about Maurice White for a moment. Your respect for him, your admiration for him. What's the gift that he gave you? Well, Maurice has always served as a uh, big brother, sometimes a father figure, a friend, uh, a mentor. Um, but I think probably the, the uh, biggest thing, one of the biggest things that he's given to me is just a sense of a dignity. The way Maurice has always carried himself since I first met him, even on the... Uh, elevator with him smelling like coconut <laughs> coconut oil you know, that was back in the day when you were you wore a lot of oils and I'm in the air in the elevator I'm going something smells like coconut and I'm a small town <laughs> guy from Denver so I, I you know I'm like wow coconuts and so I always talk I always I always remember we remember that but um yeah Maurice uh, ran an organization and the way he conducted himself was how everyone else rose to the level of conducting themselves with a class, level of sophistication style. And class and style exactly and uh, that has always been something that uh, a very very good indelible lesson for me